First, I want to start just by naming the sponsors for tonight. Anonymous for the Four Shalema of Yitzhak Yaakov and Chaya Fega, Jonathan Sultan for Yehonatan Shmuel ben Harav Abraham for the strength and Muna. Chaim Yitzhak ben Harav Yaakov Aaron for Rufo Shalema, Noah Ruti Bad Lauren for Rufo Shalema, Miriam Khanna Bad Zehava Chaya in honor of tonight and tomorrow's for 40 days of saying Nishma Kohai. She should hear Bizratovat. Anonymous for the Rufu of Anita ben Naye Narye, she's hospitalized with COVID. Yehonatan ben Mata Netam for Shiduch, clarity and to find the right Parasa. Orin Shalom ben Nadiba. Zahava, Abraham ben Raphael, Neta ben Sipor to make a shuba at Sarah ben Neta, Ari Sakov, for a full shalem of Aliza, Talia, Sarah, Bad Dina, Rachel, Penina, Sarah, Bad Gittel, Mindel, and Ronit, Bad Iziz, Anonymous, for, for Rachel ben Nitz, Nitzan, for the trial for divorce, to to have success in her trial, and Moshe for ben Eliyahu, for Clary Shiduch, Anonymous for Shiduch, Adina ben Esther, Shiduch Isaac ben Esther, and Muna Bitachon Parnasa for my father Eliyahu ben Olga. Nanam Shalun Shmad Brina, who passed away yesterday, the funerals today, she's a 22 year old single cancer. Oh, Hashem should help us. Anonymous and Rufu Shalema of Yachmil Dianu and Tobavasha. Also, Sean Carmeli and Lita Torhadada. Natanya Light, in honor of the wedding of Vivi Bindel and Rob Eisenberg. Rufu Shalema for Nechama Bdina. But being at Sira in honor of Yisrael Simcha Ben Yisrael Simcha and Bina Tziva Bibidl, the Bitsky family for Shaul Baruch Ben Bacha Rezel Ahuva Bat Sara and Yosef Zudel Ben Ahuva and Shalom Bait and Hatzalch and everything they do. Stephanie Pollock, Van from her father, Lunishmat Yisrael Ben Yosef Mer, and she should have strength from getting up for from Shiva. Also in for Koach, for Leah, Bat Gittel, Miriam, for Yishuot, and Simachot for her and her husband, her son, and Shem Shikib, with the Gorm family. And I'm Ms. Lunishmash, Shlomo Saul, Ami Rosen, sponsor Menuchas Nefesh, for Chava Gittel, Bat Etel, Tehila Yehudit, Bat Chava Gittel, Shmuel, Lev Chaim, Ben Chaya Gittel, they should always see Hashem in every aspect, anonymous, in the honor of my father, Aaron Ben Ari, Yitzhak, and Jaime Rosenheim, in the Lunishmat, our father, Aaron Ben Aryeh, for the yard site, the Mishmat, Ilan Ben Kalman, and Rufu Shalem of Yaakov Yosef Ben Rachalea, and all the anonymous sponsors. Guys, welcome. Also, today's class is also in success of Elisheva Ben Avaka, the Elman Elisheva, Shev Ben Avaka, Emma Ben Elisheva, and Rehama Kavatol Basha. Okay, today's class, we're going to be taking from a lot of books. One of the books is Anatomy of the Soul. This is a magnum opus by Rabbi Chaim Kramer. Unbelievable book. I'm going to be taking the Garden of Gratitude. Garden of Gratitude. That's today's source also. We're also going to take a book called The New Light by Rabbi Rush. We're going to take another book called Winning Every Moment by Yehiel Harari. We're also going to take a book from The Psychology of Simsum by Mordechai Rottenberg. And we're going to take also Crossing the Narrow Bridge. Oops. Crossing the Narrow Bridge by Rabbi Nachman. I just want to make sure that the sound is okay for everybody. I just want to make sure everybody the sound is okay. Everybody can hear me perfectly. Good? Wonderful. Okay. Again, I apologize for all these... Um, sound dif- sound issues and all sound difficulties, etc. And Bishat Hashem, believe me, it's not a matter of money, it's just a matter of somehow the Yetzirah keeps on getting involved and we're trying to do our best to get the sound the best. We're going to start this class. Obviously, today's class is we're going to talk about causes of spiritual depressions, causes of spiritual sadness, how do we get up from it, and also when we recognize what, what we look for, what perspective, I'm gonna just not take only one source today, but I'm gonna give you guys a combination of many, many sources from many rabbis, many Hasidic masters, on what are some of the causes of spiritual depression, ways we can beat it, etc. Okay, very, very important. Just wanna start the class by teaching lesson 119. Rabbi Nachman tells us in lesson 119, 
And he spoke numerous times about the pain of this world. And he says that absolutely everybody in this world has a, is plagued by some kind of suffering. There's not anybody in this world who has Olam Hazeh. And even the very wealthy who have the privilege have no Olam Hazeh because all their days is frustration and grief. They're full of troubles, worries, misery, sadness, and aggravation. But each one has its own issues. We spoke many, many times about this concept of Olam Hazeh, that nobody has it. So whoever thinks that they have Olam Hazeh, whoever thinks Olam Hazeh means this world. Nobody has this world. And what we're trying to explain to you is sometimes life is extremely painful. Obviously, you guys know what I went through this year. Um, you know, words can't imagine the amount of pain that I went through. And there's nobody, that, there's no Olam Hazeh. There's no this world. You know, we're, we're looking for a world of just permanent peace and permanent happiness and permanent joy. It's, it's not really out there. It doesn't exist. And Rav Nachman tells us, this includes every human being in the world. There isn't from the smallest to the greatest, they're all born to toil. So they are full with anxiety and suffering, nor is there any advice or ploy in which to be spared from this toil and sadness, except by fleeing to God and being occupied with your spirituality. So the bottom line is, the extent, the, to the extent that you're spiritual in your life, you're able to, be, to look beyond your suffering, see a greater purpose. But if you're just looking for a world of this world, it doesn't exist. So that's another thing we need to understand, that this world is full of grief. Everybody has, don't, don't just, sometimes we meet people that they think it's just themselves. There's not one person that is not filled with worries, anxieties, and all kinds of things. The only question is, is where, they, where, they, where are they running to? Where are they running to for relief? Where are they going when, they, when, when situations get rough away? But did somebody tell you they can put a cover on their face, they can put... Everybody's got this issue. The question is, where are you running to? And this is why our sages say, man is born to toil. Man is born to toil, but we have the option. We can toil in spirituality, and our physical toils are removed from us. Or we can toil in, 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 in uh, physicality, and then there's no end to the toil of life. So that's just a blanket statement. Some are richer than others, some have more kids than others, some are happily married than others. Some are... Everybody's got their own set of issues and nobody has Olam Hazeh. That is a blanket statement right away which we understand. So what I want to tell you is, okay, how do we move forward? What are some of the causes that we can have permanent peace? Another beautiful concept, just before we begin some of the causes, in the book called The Psychology of a Tzimtzum, there also is no, no, no such thing as just flying up and being permanently, permanently happy and just constantly, constantly being joy all the time. It's not realistic. What our sages are telling us is very simple, that our life are filled with Yeridot and Aliyot. Rises and falls. No matter who we are, every marriage, every situation in our life has its rises and falls. The difference between the Hasidic model it's focusing, okay, okay, what do I do now? I fell, what do I need to do now? Versus some of the other models that are just too focused on why it happened. The Hasidic model says, okay, it happened. What do I do now? It's pretty much the power of now what? So that's another important thing not to get caught up in every little detail in life, in every little situation and fall. You're going to have rises and falls no matter how spiritual you are, no matter how successful you are. It's gonna happen. You can't you can't run away from this constant, constant ups and downs. The only thing is you can get much better at handling the falls, and when you do have those rises, you can run as fast as. And this is where our, the, our, our, our sages are teaching us. The, the, the most important thing you need to focus on is what are you doing now? Not what happened yesterday, not what's gonna happen in the future, but what are you doing now? What are you doing now about the situation? How are you handling this, etc.? The worst thing we want to do is we want to stay in excessive guilt, in excessive shame, and excessive self-incrimination, etc. That we don't want to run away from. That's the main thing. You made a mess, now clean it up. That's it's this is ABC of Hasidic model. What are you doing now? This is why we never focus on the past, we reflect on the past, but we constantly create the new moment by constantly achieving newness. So that's a very, very important message your ability, which we're going to talk about now, the, a symptom is happening to you. A symptom is a contraction of light. So right away, before we even get to this class, we get to the, to, to the details, 
You're going to have a symptom, you're going to have contractions of light, you're going to have falls for the sake of rises, and you're going to have pain in this world. Now the question is, is like I said before, what are you gonna do about it, okay? Sometimes what we want to do is we don't want to give too much energy to this pain. We, want, we don't want to give too much energy. We want to be more resilient. So that's, that's before. Now Rav Nachman tells us something very beautiful in Lesson 119. I'm sorry, Lesson 67. And he tells us that every single... Our, our soul is made up basically of a certain amount of elements, five elements. Five, five different types, five different levels of our soul. The first level of our soul refers to the nefesh, which is the blood, which is the desires. That represents the numerical value of, of, of God's name, hey. The second is our emotions, and our third is our soul. So practically, what we're going to talk about today is how do we get to these next levels? But the first thing we have to do right away is focus on the water element. We know that everything in Kabbalistically has, is rooted in four things. Earth, fire, water, and air. And we know that if we can't get past the element of desire, it's very, very hard to get to the next element. Rabbi Nachman's gonna tell us that there are three things that pretty much underline the heart. There are three cravings that, you ha that we have that these three cravings, if, we don't, if we're not able to work with them, we're not able to beat them, we're not able to work on them, they can unfortunately put us to sleep spiritually. They can put us, to a mental, put us in a mental sleep. Rav Nachman didn't really use this concept of depression. He uses when, when a person's not using his capacity. It's not that he's depressed or he's, uh, he's just asleep. So let's take also the word when we're referring here to, it's not just the concept of depression, spiritual depression, but being asleep. When we say we're asleep, that means our, 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 we're not growing. When you're not growing, you're automatically going down. That's, that's the law of uh, spirituality 101. If I'm either growing, I'm, I'm, going, I'm, I'm running, or I'm descending. Either I'm running out of Egypt, or I'm already back there. It's not a question where you can be mediocre. So he tells us there's three things, which is rooted in water, which is all, all our physicality, our relationship with these three things have a major deal to do with how basically our happiness. And we're going to talk about these three things today before we get to the other issues at hand. And again, I'm just giving you guys, I'm not telling you the one specific thing, I'm just giving you guys a complete different opinions from different sages and each one of us can see which one pertains to us, which ones we're struggling with. We all come completely different, each one of us struggles with something else. Everybody's struggle is completely different. What your struggle could be, for one person, it's not a struggle for another person. But we all struggle in something, and this is specifically why you can see, even when we're born, we're all born, every single sign that we're born, for example, Scorpios are water signs, uh, you know, Leos are fire, uh, Aquarius is air, Virgos are earth. That also has a lot to do with a person's personality <clears throat> and a person's struggle in this world. So dealing with the water issue, which refers to Rav Nachman's going to tell us, there are three things that underline your, your, your heart. And this is money, sex, and food. These three things can cause a person to have a spiritual depression or put him to sleep. Anything we speak about, whenever there's too much of an excess, there's also sorrow. Whenever there's, when a person's satisfied, he has happiness. But when there's excess, there's a, the capacity for sorrow. Rabbi Nachman talks about this in Lesson 24. So let's talk about first, for example, the element of, for example, food. Rabbi Nachman tells us that many spiritual and religious people have fallen to a period of sadness and depression due to the food they eat. Rabbi Nachman tells us in Lesson 60, Lesson 62, less than uh, 260, many, many causes. And he tells us that there are many causes of food. When we don't eat properly, when our diets don't work properly, when we don't eat, we eat too much food, or when we're using food as a mechanism to numb our emotions, when we're stuffing our face instead of facing our stuff, eat the wrong types of food can cause a person to be spiritually depressed. 
And also today, we can also take just on the science behind it, we know that that 90, 80 to 90% of our serotonin comes from our gut. So your type of diet, your, the, how much you eat, your relationship with food, we always say this all the time, that happiness could be at the end of your fork. Your relationship to food and spirituality is a big, big deal. Rabbi Nachman says that if a person doesn't have a good relationship with diet, he can fall into sleep and sadness and depression. So just changing your diet for some people could be one of the causes. Eating less, having a different relationship with food, specifically this month itself. This month itself is a month of Shvat. This month itself is a, is a month to elevate yourself on, on how you eat and where you eat. And we know pretty much that our mood, the way after we eat, we, have, we get either moody, either we have energy after we eat, or we go to sleep. And the types of food you eat have a major effect on your spirituality and on your happiness. 90% of your serotonin is in your gut. There's already major links between gut leaks and depression. So this is not just a spiritual thing, there's also science behind it. That if a person doesn't eat properly, he doesn't have a good relationship with food, that causes too much water, excessive water causes sickness, and that could be one of the causes. So let's just, let's just check that off. Your relationship with food has a major, major difference. I know people that change their diet, completely had different relationship to food, they were much happier, they had much more energy, etc. Remember, anytime we're using food as a mechanism to run away from life, you're definitely going to call that definitely going to cause more of a spiritual depression and even a, a even a, a even a regular depression. The second cause Rab Nachman tells us is your relationship with money. Your relationship with money is a big deal. Today if we don't have money if we don't have a good relationship with money and we lose our faith, Rabbi Nachman tells us that running after money could be one of the greatest causes of a person to living in sadness and depression. And he brings this from the concept of when Adam ate from the tree of knowledge, he was cursed with sadness you shall eat. The serpent too was cursed. Dust shall be at all your days of your life. So Rabbi Nachman is referring to here as the word dust corresponds to money. Rav Nachman explains when somebody's obsessed with wealth and spends all his days and all his life seeking it, he's going to have a curse that he'll never be happy. And you see today, people wake up all day long, all day long they're obsessed with money, they're obsessed with other people's money, and they have no happiness with money. They work, and the harder they work, the less they make, because their relationship with money is if I, my net worth is my self-worth. And when you start living and all day long you're running to money, you're running to sadness, you don't have faith and, and trust in God, that God is the one to provide you, but you think it's your effort, it's constantly you, my hands, etc. So your relationship to money, which can root, be rooted in not having trust, anger, etc., that can make you completely, completely depressed. Rav Nachman tells us that the only way to be saved from this is, this is why our sages say that a person dies with half of what he wants. So you're already prone in this, in this situation that you, your relationship with money, if you're not giving a lot of charity, the money could sink you. Money can sink you and it can lose you. you can, a person can lose his, 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 his intellect because all day long it's money, 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 nothing but money. And if I make it, I'm happy. If I don't make it, I'm, I'm depressed and sad. And that, that is a tremendous cause of why many, many people have fallen away spiritually because of money. And it's the complete opposite. It's when you have more trust in God and you put the right effort, God provides you with it. So sometimes by you worrying, by you being angry, by you being anxious, you're actually sabotaging your own blessing. So this is a very important me method that the more desperate we are, the more we run after it, and the more we run after things, like we spoke about many times, the more you run after something, the more it runs away from you. And this is why our sages tell us, keep Shabbat, let the blessing come to you, give charity, let the blessing come to you, versus spending all your days and your whole life running after money. And many times you tell people, hey, try this, try that. No, 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 I'm busy, 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 busy. Busy doing what? Chasing. So Rabbi tells us this is an area of our lives that you have tremendous amount of a, a tendency for depression. And this is where money is an issue. If you don't have a relationship where money is just, 
money is given to you by God. You have to do the right things with the money. You have to do charity. But being, you know, comparing yourself to money and that could lead you to sadness. This is why most gamblers are not happy. Gamblers are not happy people because there's never enough. And usually after gambling, they end up with sex addictions and all kinds of other things that, you know, if you, don't, you need to change your relationship with money. It's, I can't tell you that. The way you change your relationship with money is I attract money by being happy, by giving charity, by putting myself in the right position, creating the right, the right vessel. But the more I die trying, you're going to die trying. And this is exactly what Rav Nachman tells us. He says it's considered, it's connected to the spleen, and the spleen is connected to the, the area of our blood, which is sadness and depression. So many have fallen because of money. And again, when people don't have money, when they lack money, what they do for it, they lie, they cheat, they steal, they abandon everything, and they die trying. And this is where you have to be very careful to give a lot of charity, to work on your relationship with your Creator, because this is so careful, this area in your life, that if you don't constantly focus on charity and you don't constantly join, trying to do good things with money and try to have a better relationship with money, you are going to fall into this one. And when you fall into this one, you're gonna fall, this is going to cause you to fall into the one for sex and this is going to cause you to fall into the other ones. And this is where I'm not going to emphasize so much on the importance of having a spiritual life. Because when I'm spiritual, I attract more. But when I'm physical, I all I'm, all I'm doing is running and running and running after. It. So that's another area of area of your life. Your life is depressed. Is your relationship with money? You never felt like you had you had enough, or it's never giving to you enough. You're never content with it. You're always angry, and this is where it's all the it's a hard. It's teasing you, teasing you. You're losing your faith. It's teasing you constantly, teasing you constantly. And don't guys don't think that we're not prone to this. We're very, very, this is an area of our life, especially in America. America is money, money, money. That it's an area of your life that you have to really, really work on having a lot of prayers. There's 70, there's 140 prayers. Rav Nachman tells us that the word mamon, which is money, represents 140 times. Okay, 40. 70 cries you have to make, you have to cry out for a prophet. And then you have to cry out 70 more times that you shouldn't think that you're the one making the money. You should recognize it's God giving you the money. If you're making an effort, you're creating a vessel, but you have to be very careful with the curse. From my hands, I make money. This is why we open up our hands. We don't control our hands. And usually people that have a bad relationship with money, they end up destroying their lives, they destroy the people's lives. And it, it's just, it's, it's a terrible, terrible way. The third thing, the third thing, which is connected also to sadness, is a uh, sexual immorality. Sexual immorality, where Nachman tells us, is one of the greatest ways to be depressed, especially for men. What you know, watching pornography, watching inappropriate things, and spilling the seed. This is also caused by sadness. This is why the Samech Mem, she has a he has a wife. The Satan has a wife. Her name is L I L I T H. And that, her, her wife, that, she's, she's responsible for two things. She's responsible first to get you mad, and the second, to, to get you depressed, and the second, she tempts you with sin. So this is why it's very, very important for guys to recognize that sometimes, or most of the times, their parnasa can come from their wife. If, they're, if they have a spiritual relationship, they work on their spirit, spirituality, they're actually Hashem blesses them through their wife. So it forces the man to have self-control in this area. And when you're single, uh, Rabbi Nachman tells us, the Gemara tells us, it's like you're living without a wall. You're living without protection. So it's very, very important, guys, that usually Parnassa comes afterwards and happiness comes after you get married versus when we're, when we're single and we're doing inappropriate things. Again, I'm not here to judge. I'm just simply stating the sources and areas of your life that can call, be, be the cause of it. So when you see a guy with 20 girls and you know, every, one, every night there's a different girl, it's like a guy jumping off the building. You ask him, how are you doing? Oh, look, I'm doing great. And after he jumps off the building, you can see them fall. And they're not really alive. Alive is when you start connecting to finding a soulmate, trying to get married, and working on getting your, getting Baruch Hashem, 
the life from, the, from your wife. This is why the Gemara tells us our Shefa comes from the wife, etc. Because when you get married, you get blessed. So technically, there's a lot of reasons why sometimes guys, yeah, there's single guys making money, etc. But the quality of money, the type of money, the happiness really, really comes from the wife. So remember, that's another area of our lives that can cause spiritual depression. It's definitely phys- too much physicality, especially for men. I have a 40-day challenge. And I myself, when I was younger, I had this issue, and I've helped many, many people with um, work on this area. Because just practically, any time where we're getting free dopamine and our brain cannot maintain that dopamine, what's, what's going to happen? If I'm, all of a sudden my brain goes to 200% dopamine and I'm watching inappropriate things, I can't maintain 200% dopamine. So anything else in my life just becomes a drop. So this is an area where all of a sudden, God forbid, these addictions people become extremely depressed because nothing nothing is good enough. That means whatever thing I'm going to do in my life, it's, I'm never going to be able to constantly hit that high level of dopamine, etc. So that's another thing. That's another thing very, very important is to work on spiritual, um, your spirituality, specifically cleansing, spiritual cleansing that will ultimately lead you to happiness and get you out of depression. And this is all rooted in the element of water. Water is, is anything that's pleasure, excess, period. Okay? So once we hit, and once we're able to beat and work on, to the degree that we work on our desires, is the amount of spirituality being revealed to us. I mean, if I'm working on my eating, I, I, a person can work on his, um, his eating, uh, you eat better, all of a sudden he's, he's, he feels more spiritual, he feels connected with God. A person can all of a sudden work and give charity and, and become more, have a better relationship with having a, a relationship with trust and, and faith, he, he becomes a much better connected to God. Same thing, a person's married, he channels the sexual energy the right way, he becomes more connected. When I'm connected, I feel happier in general because I feel fulfillment, etc., direction, period. Second thing that causes is now our emotions. So the second is, is, the, is the Ruach, our, our ability to handle our emotions, our ability to handle the areas of the Ruach, right? This is our emotional area. So if we just look at the elements of earth, fire, water, and air, let's talk about earth, okay? Earth is what? Earth, earth is faith. A person having the element of earth in Kabbalah represents the last hay, is, is hay, is, is earth. So one of the things that we have to be careful for is the constant sadness, sadness in life about our expectations. Earth is, Rabbi Nachman tells us, you're very, very, you know, a lot of times you're walking with a lot of expectations in life, and we always need respect from other people. But the, the ability to also have have faith is the ultimate rectification for Earth, because Earth pulls you to the ground. Earth wants to pull you to sadness. This is why we have to do a lot, a lot of work on faith. Faith is the opposite of Earth. Faith, faith elevates the Earth. So a, the element of Earth is always being, God forbid, sad. And the greatest remedy for that is gratitude. Um, if you just take a look at Rabbi Rush, right? How do I beat sadness in my life? How do I beat the element of earth? By constantly being grateful. The garden of gratitude is basically telling us that the main reason why a person falls into depression is because he's ungrateful. He comes into this world expecting everything. He expects everything to come to him. He expects everything in his life. He's always coming, coming here with expectation mode. And we always complain. And we always complain, complain, complain constantly. So this is why your gratitude has helped tremendously. There's many studies showing that people were, were grateful for five things a day, were much more happier in their lives. But gratitude is the, op- is, the absence, is the opposite of the earth. The earth wants to pull you down and pull you down to routine. What you have to do is you have to have a lot of gratitude. And this is the reason why when a person doesn't believe that everything's happening for his benefit, this is exactly what happened in, in Egypt, the Jews were always complaining, we're not getting enough water, we're not getting enough this, I'm not getting that, I'm not getting this, I'm not getting that. The constant complaints and the lack of gratitude was the reason for the intense exile. This is also practically in our lives. When we go through a challenge, when we go through a thing, we get stuck on the earth, we get stuck in the sadness, we get stuck in that earth we don't move, we get stuck with our mindset. What we need to do is we need to have massive amount of gratitude. A great book for that is The Garden of Gratitude. So according to Rabbi Rush, one of the greatest, when you're happy and you're grateful, that's faith. Faith is the ultimate rectification for the earth.
which is sadness. And that's the element of earth, always sluggish, sadness, being stuck. Um, we know that, for example, Capricorns and, and the Virgos and, um, and Tauruses, they're stuck. They battle constantly sadness. They have a tendency for sadness. Sometimes they get stuck. They get stuck on logic. They get stuck on, on materialism. They get stuck on the earth. They, they need a lot of work on spirituality. I know many Sagittarius, I know many Virgos, Capricorns, specifically earth signs that have a major tendency with extra sadness. They're tremendous. They're extremely dependable people. They're amazing workers. They're, you know, they could, they could run programs, but when, it, when things don't go their way, they have a hard time letting go and they have a hard time getting through that earth. So the stubbornness, and, and that's an area where we have to do the opposite. We have to be completely flexible. And the way to do that is through faith. And that is the element of God's name of hey. So we already spoke about, we already spoke about water. Water is, a, is, water is yud ke bav ke. So water is the first yud. The next hey represents fire, right? So where is the area of fire in our lives where we can have, where we can emotionally, when a person has tremendous anger issues, and we already know where anger comes from. Anger really comes from control. Person is always angry because he always wants to control the situation in life. He's afraid to, uh, you know, he's afraid to let go. He's afraid to let God. He always wants to have tremendous fear. And we already know many times that when a person has fear, it leads them to control. Control leads to anger, and anger leads to depression. So the element of fire is an area where it's going to lead you to depression. So remember, fear leads you to control, control leads you to anger, and anger leads you to depression. So one of the causes from Nachman says is too much fire in your life. You know, signs are fire signs are Leos, uh, Sagittarius, um, you know, uh, Sagittarius and, uh, I forgot the other one, Aries. These are areas also that you can see a lot of fire signs that are very, that sometimes they get angry very quickly, very impatient. Uh, they don't like the process sometimes. So they have an issue with anger. And we know when anger can turn, anger definitely, Rav Nachman tells us, anger turns into depression. That's another reason why the anger we are, the more depressed we're going to be. So you have to enjoy the process and be able to take constrictive criticism. The ultimate solution for anger signs, which is, which is what? Humility. Humility, being open-minded, being patient in life. And that's how, you, that's how you deal with the fire and anger. And this is an area of our lives that fire and anger can really, really, really take you to very, very dark places in your life. And, it's gonna, and, the, and the end is definitely, definitely, definitely a, a depression. Believe me, at the end of anger is depression. At the end of fire, at the end of all this aggravation is completely depression because nothing goes your way. The more angry we are, the, the more things will not go our way. And this is where Rav Nachman tells us you have to really, really enjoy the process. Use your anger the right way. Use your fire the right way. Use it to lead people. Use it to inspire people. Use it to inspire yourself. But don't use it to control other people and control situations. That's an area of your life where if you have too much fire, it's going to lead you to depression. So this is an area where we need massive amount of humility. The last is air. The air, the quality of air, also in God's name, is the Vav. Yurke Vav. The Vav is air. So any imbalance in an air would be a person being too much inflated, being too egotistical, too much air, too much air. Constant air, thinks he's better than others. This is an area of his life that he doesn't have structure or he has too much, too much, too much ego. And what happens when you have too much ego? You always want people to respect you. We always want people to give you kavod. You always want people to give you constant, constant validation. It's too much of an ego. And the more you seek, the more people run away from you. So by not getting what, you, what, you, what you're always looking for, you end up with nothing and you end up with depression. So this is an area you could see many people, oh, I was not loved by them, they didn't love me. It's because you're not supposed to be looking for it. it when you're happy, when you're joyful, when you're in a good mindset, people come to you instead of you going after that. So that's an area of our lives that we have tremendous tendency to have a lot, a lot of too much ego. And of, of the opposite of a tremendous ego is what? Humility. It's humility. So that's an area of our lives that to the extent where, that we're less self-centered, we're going to be happier. A great, a great uh, book on this, a great book on this is Winning Every Moment. 
What does it mean, too much air? Too much air is basically telling you all you're focusing is I, 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 I. You are the center of the world. So we come in here in this world not to be the center of the world because the more I'm worried and the more absorbed I am with myself, the more I think things personal, the more I blame people for my issues. I am too, I'm getting, I'm the cause of all, all of this. And this is where the Balatanya tells us very simple. He says it's very beautiful. He says, the person's main mental, spiritual, emotional issues comes with the obsession over I, that everything's I. It's, it could be his expectation. It could be, you know, he, he, he always needs respect from people or anything to deal with that. This is where Rosh Shnul Zalman found the singular source that he sought to treat. The source of all emotional and spiritual problems stems from the ego's tendency, or he says the animal soul's tendency, to put the I in the center of existence. The I become the center of existence. So the more egocentrical I am, the more I'm going to be in pain when I'm going to be insulted, the more I'm going to be pain when people don't do what I do, what I do, the more I put demands on others, the more I seek validation, and basically we, we become the takers in our lives. And that could be the major causes of our a person going through depression because he's not getting what he's what he's running after. Because why? Because he's not supposed to be running after it anyway. And that's the problem. The problem is you're not supposed to be running and making the eye the center of attraction. Like we said many times, humble people cannot be insulted. But people that have always, always seeking validation, and always seeking the eye, and it's self-centered, they're always in their head. They always think everybody's talking about them. They're always comparing themselves to everybody. And this is the air, element of air. Too much air. An imbalance of air causes a sickness, causes a person to, be, to, to, to not feel gratitude. Remember, healing is when you have harmony between all four elements, earth, fire, water, and air. When there's harmony, there's healing. When there's disharmony, there's sickness. There's imbalance. That's where a person, our job in life is to really work. Ramachman tells us our job in life is to really work on the attribute that we're struggling, whether our struggle could be with anger and fire or our struggle could be with um, being stuck to sadness and depression, not letting things go and having faith or whether our struggle could be with too much excessive impulses and, and constantly needing more and more and more or our struggle could be pr practically with, you know, with constant validation and I and low self-esteem, because I, I, when a person has healthy self-esteem, he's happy himself. He doesn't need others' opinion to validate him. So this, these are areas in our life that really, Rabbi Nachman tells us that all, all our character traits are really rooted in these four traits. And these four traits are all, all they all have, have God's name, yud ke vav ke. The Yud represents water. The He represents, um, represents fire. The Vav of God's name represents air. And the last hay represents earth. So we could pretty much see that when there's a disconnection, when there's something missing, then God's name is not complete. When God's name is not complete in our person's life, he doesn't, he, he feels he's missing something. This is ultimately our job is to really, really complete, complete everything back to order. Very, very important. So those are some of the things. This is why he's telling you here, to, the happier, the more, which is a really a beautiful book, which is called Winning Every Moment. He's basically, the whole book is basically that we all have moments in our lives between our animal soul and our godly soul. And our job in life is to win these moments, you know, win these moments, you know, constantly, you know, I feel tired. Okay, I don't want to do a class. I'm doing a class. I just won the moment. Uh, I don't want to apologize to that person. Well, I decided to do it. I just won that moment. I'm getting up in the morning. Constantly winning moments because we, we're, we're always, we have a tendency always to go into retreat. Winning the moment is focusing more on the soul, not on what I want to do, but what my soul needs to do, what my greater version of me needs to do. And this is the difference between a person having healthy self-esteem, he's investing in his future self versus what's, what's comfortable now versus what's easy now. It's a very, very, very important concept. Another thing I want to talk about, <clears throat> after we review the class, we'll, 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 we could definitely take some questions. Another question which can cause a person also to, to not to have spiritual sadness is by another book by Rabbi Rush, is not having any desire, not having any desire, not having, having 
you know, any desire for anything greater in this life, being too comfortable in this world. You know, our sages sit, tell us that when a person doesn't have a desire, he doesn't have goals, he doesn't have anything, that could also lead him to also fall like, okay, what's my purpose? You know, many times I would say the majority of people in, in recovery, they come to our facility for two reasons, either lack of meaning, no desire, no goals in life, no, no, no bigger picture, or, or, or trauma, you know, going through tremendous pain and not being able to let go of that or not able to process that situation and, and move on. So you could see it's either trauma or lack of desire. So you could take, for example, use your element of fire and use it to build goals versus instead of using the element of, God forbid, um, using it to, be, to become self-centered. And this is an area, so we've talked about many things. So number one, we spoke about, you know, the, the importance of, of this world is difficult. Don't expect this world already to be easy. Expect this world, that this world, the more spiritual you are, the happier you're going to be in general. But don't expect the world of love has that. The second thing we spoke about today, which is very, very important, is the concept of a tzimtzum. The concept that you're not, it, life is not exactly what you're going constantly. It's not an up, 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 up ladder. It's up, down, up, down. It's running and returning. So don't expect a life of constant flow, constant ups. You have to know how to run and you also have to know how to return. You have to know how to also, when, when, you, when a person's having a rough day, he has to know how to hang on to those days and not completely abandon ship. So that's another important message in, you know, there's a night and there's a day. Night is for faith. The day is for clarity. So we also have these nights and days in our lives that we have to be able to handle. The struggle itself is what causes the vessel. Another thing we spoke about is obviously the, the, the three things, the three water elements that can cause a person to have sickness, God forbid. It could be water, too much food, which is, which is an absence of uh, too much excess of water or his relationship to money that could always never, he'll never be satisfied. So he's always depressed that he's not making enough and, or his relationship, God forbid, to sex with too much sexual pleasure, too much water that could lead a person to, to God forbid, spiritual sickness. And then we spoke about also the concept of the, the, the our emotions, you know, anger, anger, uh, getting, you know, dealing with the past, letting go of earth elements, ego, etc. So this class is really a lot of really, a lot of topics and each of us have to work on, you know, some areas more than others. And, and also we spoke about the element of gratitude, the importance of having gratitude that we, especially for, for elements of earth, or for, we're really stuck on the ground that we can't really find anything to be happy about. We just be grateful and change your perspective and all that. I'll be happy to open to open up for, to take some questions. Anybody have any questions? Another thing is before we just get to the questions, whatever element, whatever thing you need to work on, whatever we spoke about, whether you have an issue with gratitude, or you have an issue with getting over the past, you have an issue with food, the only way to beat this, according to Rav Nachman, is to spend a specific amount of time talking and asking your creator to help you nullify that addiction, that situation in your life. And to the degree that you have struggled in that area, you, you're also going to be able to have the amount of light it's not that the struggle itself, I just get the struggle. When I beat those struggles, you get a tremendous amount of light afterwards. I know when I was dealing my, when I was gambling and I was in the long, wrong lifestyle, when I was able to beat that addiction and I was able to beat that tava and get spiritual, look, my whole life changed. I mean, my whole life changed. So there's a tremendous upside here that when a person does work on that, those particular issues, etc. cetera. All, all of the books here I recommend um, you know, Anatomy of the Soul talks about the four elements. This is a phenomenal, this is a phenomenal book, Anatomy of the Soul. It's a great, great book. But again, I would say today, <clears throat> if you're, if you're in business, if you're in business or if you have any kind of, you're, you have to deal with either books on trust <clears throat> and definitely books on anything to give, to give a lot of charity. A person, Rav Nachman tells us, is very simple. If a person does not have trust and give charity, he's going to fall exactly into this addiction of money. And this addiction of money, <coughs> unfortunately, takes you to very, very dark places. 
because there's never content. There's never contentment, and, and and unfortunately, we end up we end up depending on other people for money instead of depending on our creator for money. Very very important. Can you please post the book titles? Yes, we can post the book titles that we use in the book. Absolutely. Anybody have any other questions on this class? Just want to see any other questions and then we'll be, we'll be free to go. But these are, the, I gave you guys maybe 10 to 10 to 12 sources of areas in our life that we do struggle, we can struggle in. And our job is really, really to, to notice it and not to be ashamed of it, but to really work on it. Like I said, I recommend 20 minutes of his to do it, 20 minutes of talking to God about the situations and asking God to help you. Remember, God put you in, 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 in Mitzrayim, God put you in Egypt, and he's the only one that can take you out. I think people are asking about the elements of the signs. The earth are Taurus, the or earth are Taurus, uh, Virgo, and Capricorn. So remember, or or earth signs are very drawn to materialism, they're drawn to the ground. Their greatest struggles are, are faith. They, they, have a, they, have a, they have a big gate to heart with negativity, um, et cetera. The other struggles, the other struggles are, uh, for example, fire, Leos and, and um, Leos and Sagittarius and also um, Aries. Those are those are the struggles with what? With impatientness, with, uh, you know, not not taking constructive criticism, you know, being too, too, too OCD sometimes. Everything has to be their way, not being able to be flexible, etc. And some also the other ones, the for example, the water signs are Scorpios, Cancers, and um, uh, Pisces. You have to be careful with excess, too much sex, too much food, too much, too much excess, too much excess. Also, that can lead a person to, to unfortunately to be sickness, etc. And air also lack of structure. Um, you know, too much air, too much too hot headed, not willing to listen, etc. Very rebellious. Just, just as pretty much just in, in general. Hashem help us all that we should all be zochet to hit our goals. Um, for the for the goal, those that are dealing with spirituality, dealing with, for example, uh, spilling of the seed, etc. The recommendation is definitely tikkun aklali. That can help you tremendously with with sadness. Um, for those dealing with, for example, um, you know, food issues, there's definitely deal with the better to deal with the emotional issues that are causing a person, God forbid, to eat. Um, those kind of things. It's very important that you deal with the emotions. When a person deals with the emotions, he's going to have a much better chance of beating those addictions than just dealing with the diet because there's a certain amount of cravings you have under things. But do expect challenges in every single area that you're trying to work on. Don't expect it to easy. Anything that's easy, you're going to have challenges, etc. etc. All right? Which book did you speak about food? Well, Rabbi Nachman tells us this in, in many lessons, in Lesson 47, etc. But again, when you're talking about food, it's more you want to focus more on the, on the emotional, what, the, what, what, you're, what you're escaping to. You know, focus more on controlling your emotions. Then that will help you much more with the food aspect. You know, this is, I think, sometimes we're treating it the wrong way. If we focus on, you know, how, how do I cope with my emotions? Facing your stuff instead of running away from it then you can eat less things and, and, and you'll need eat less things in general. May Hashem help you all and everybody should have tremendous success. I hope that the sound was good. I keep I hope really, really that everybody's able to hear me properly. And may Hashem help bless all of you and continue to get that. And according to the amount of that that we have is the amount of mercy that we get in heaven. So remember, very, very important that we constantly work on ourselves and constantly grow. Perfect. Have a great day. Have a great good night.